Ann Kornick from Paint and Porcelain Exchange. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting. And for those of you that have been painting a while, I hope to encourage you to paint along with us. And today we're going to do dogwood. Um, now, I've done dogwood in the past. I did it uh, in 2020 and it didn't turn out r quite right. And I think part of it was I hadn't been painting long enough to realize that there were some tricks to painting dogwood. So I will share those with you with you today. Um, this is my dogwood. This is how it turned out. Oops, this way here. This is my second fire. I'm debating whether to do a third. I'm afraid to though, and I'll tell you why. To give you an idea of how big my kiln is, see how big this is? It's too big for my kiln. I can't stand it up in my kiln. The top touches the top of the kiln. And so I was really disappointed because I wanted to do the background with like an ivory or pink or something just to get the glare off, but I can't and it won't work for me. So um, now one of the things you'll see here, here on this, this little guy here, notice how it's white in the center and then it comes off and gets pink on the edges. That's something I didn't know to do on my original uh, dogwoods that we did back in 2020. So I'll show you how to do that. It's very, very simple. Uh, I think it was just a matter of me painting long enough to know, uh, to be able to figure out some of the tricks of the trade. And then I did paint this part, but not the sides of this um, beautiful vase. So it's a round vase, but because it wouldn't stand up, I could only fire one time, one side at a time. So I put, the design on the other half for today so that um, I'll get both sides painted. So now, what's the difference between um, dogwood and, say, wild roses, which most people say, well, it looks just like it. Well, first of all, wild roses have five petals. Dogwoods only have four petals. Okay, that's a big difference. The other thing is with um, and this is somebody else's, um, and I don't know who I wish they had signed it, uh, plate. And if anybody recognizes this painting, please let me know. I bought this a while ago because I just loved it. I think I showed it last week. But notice here, you paint around the center. You paint the depth around the center. And the same thing, oops, up here. See, the depth is around the center. Um, you don't do that on wild rose, on uh, dogwood. Dogwood the color, the depth, is at the edges of the petals. So that's that's the major difference. All righty. Uh, for colors, I luckily have a dogwood. And I'll tell you, if you have this dogwood, it's a fantastic, oops, it's a fantastic color. Um, it really comes out nice. It's kind of like a rose, or like the way I wish rose would come out. And again, see now that's what it looks like, but then this is this is how it how it comes out. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so I'm real I'm real thrilled with that. Um, I also have a yellow. I'm using mixing yellow, a yellow green. You want a really bright um, light green, like a yellow green or a chartreuse. You also want the green that I have on here. I said like a medium green. I mean like a grass green, something that's going to be bright. Because if you look at, uh, and I have a dogwood in my backyard, and I've taken pictures of it. If you look at it, you'll find out that what, what you see is um, very small leaves, and they're, they're brand new leaves, so they're real bright. And then I have a little bit of brown. Here I have rich brown, because I tried my Jilly Brown. It, it just wasn't quite dark enough. But you know, you probably only need two brushes for this. This one is a uh, quarter inch square shader. And I made the mistake on the first time that I painted these to use too large a brush. What you want to do is judge that the brush is about about half, you know, about the size of the petal. Like here, see here? It's about half the size of the petal. You don't want it any bigger than that, but you do want a nice big brush because you need to have, so quarter inch is about as large as I would go if you're using my pattern. And the reason is you want to have nice, smooth strokes. And if you use a tiny brush, if you use something like this, a four, you're going to get short, choppy little strokes because you're going to have to do it so many times. You want them to be nice and smooth. And then you will need a liner like this. So um, 
going to start out, make sure my brush is clean, and I'm going to side load with dogwood. So here's my dogwood. I'm side loading now. For those of you that might be brand new to this, this you just put little, you only get half your brush. You start with the corner and you make little C's into the lower part of that paint. You mix your paints, at least I do, with um, a mineral oil. And you can buy mineral oil at the, the drugstore or what have you, and you just put a couple of drops on your tile and mix your paints. So now we're gonna start here, and I'm gonna pull down this way. Oops, it's not dark enough. Let me get a little more color there. When I'm showing people, it doesn't always come out dark enough. Okay, there. And I'm gonna to pull to the edge and then pull to the edge again. There we go. The nice thing is this little pillow vase that I'm painting on will automatically turn because it's round, so. Now, one thing you wanna do is leave the white close to the center. It's better, a little bit. Oops, not quite that much. There, that's better. And I'm going to turn this and turn it here and do this section here. You're only doing the color at the end, and you're trying to get it so that it does like almost like little lines because these do have lines on them. If you've ever seen a picture of a dogwood, here's one. Can you see the little lines right there on it? So you want those little lines if you can get them. But don't go out of your way to make it too, too many lines because you really, you don't want to overdo. Go very pale on the first, um, first drawing. And if you fold over any of the leaves, put a little bit of depth on the bottom half of it just so you know where it is. And you might want to take something like a Q-tip or something and just wipe out a little there. Okay. All right. And we're going to do the same with all of these. So see, that's the secret to dogwood. You want the um, you want the color on the outside. Now they flip over a lot of different ways. They grow straight up, and then they they kind of stack on top of each other. So. Um, here, instead of putting the dark at the bottom, this is one of those flip leaves. That's why it looks so funny. You're just going to put the dark at the edge. And here, you're just going to put the dark at the edge. And here, you're going to put the dark at the bottom. But on the top one, you're going to put it at the outside edge. And that bump in the middle is where you're going to put the center of the flower. And the center of the flower is raised. That's a little better than this is here. Let me just, there, okay. And then we're going to go to this one. Now the temptation is to try to put your color at the base. Don't do that. Don't give in. Now here again, you're just going to paint the very edge and there's like a little divot in it. So you want to make sure that you get that little divot. Because later on you're going to put a little bit of a green or a brown. It just depends on what your, your flowers look like. But you're always going to the outside edge. And that is the key. And that's something I didn't know when I was doing these before. And I've learned it since. If you paint just the outside edge, it will turn out exactly the way you want it to. I'm trying to do it so that you can see what I'm doing. Just the edge. And you notice I keep turning it. For those of you that are new to China painting, the key is to turn it. Why? Because you should always paint towards yourself. Now, if it starts getting a little, uh, what do I have here? Do I have any? 
I need a pointed Q-tip and I've got a lot of the others in there. Okay. If it starts getting a little out of the lines and you want to fix it, wait till you're done with all the flowers and then go around and just kind of gently touch the edges wherever you need to, to shape them a little better. And it may not be the paint that you see outside the line. It may actually be some of the tracing. It depends what you trace with. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have gotten in the middle like that. Okay, but these are very nice if you can find them. I order mine from Amazon because nobody around here seems to carry the pointed ones. Okay, oh, you know I lied. We need one other brush. You need a, a pointer like this. And I'm gonna do my middle. So I'm gonna take my yellow green first and just put it in everywhere I want my middle. And you go, why yellow green? Well, oops, I got a little too much there. Um, the yellow green is the, that and, and with the yellow is exactly the color of the centers of these. Now I cheat a little when I do my centers. Okay, so I've got my yellow green on all my centers. Yeah, he actually could use another brush too. And I get my itty bitty, teeny tiny, smallest little brush that I can find like this. And I'm going to get dip it in the yellow. Really, now when I say dip, I mean really roll it in the yellow. Yep. And I'm just gonna put little circles in here. Because if you look at a dogwood, that's what they have. So let me show you here. Here's a picture of one. Can you see the, see the little circles in there sticking out? You could, if you have yellow enamel, do some yellow enamel on here. That would be very pretty. If it's too small to put little dots in like this one is, then just put one and don't worry about it. This is the guy that has to have the best outcome. This one here, because he's the one that most people will notice. Okay. Now I haven't shaded him or anything because that comes later. This is just the first coat. Now we're going to do the leaves. Going back to my quarter inch square shader and I'm going to clean it because I still have some pink on it. We're going to take the dark. I loaded full load of the light green with a side load of the grass green and I'm just going to very carefully pull it in and I'm going to do the same thing on this side right here. Very carefully pull it in Small stuff, you have to work twice as hard to get it nice. You ever find that? And then I do the little end. It is like a wild rose leaf when they're small like this. So it is like a, a rose leaf. You can do it just like a rose leaf if you want. And it should work out fine. Okay. Oh, a little too dark. Here we go. Pull it over to the middle and then do the end. Full load, side load. Flip it around. Oh, I need a little more side load. The side load is critical. If you don't get the side load, you won't get the shading. So if it's not dark enough, keep playing with it till it is, okay? There, that's the way I want it. And then here I want a little on the end. And here I want a little on the end, just like that. And I want a little more depth there, so I'm putting that there and a little more depth right there. Okay. Alrighty. And we've got these two to do. And these two you should be able to see a little easier, simply because they don't have all the... Um, 
So see now this one, you can see because I don't have as much drawing on it, how that leaf is going to turn out. And don't worry if you don't get the color exactly right this time, because you still have another fire to do. Okay, oops, I went down too far and I got a lot of the gunk on my brush. All righty. Now, if you want to try to use a brighter green in here, you can. But that's up to you. You can use the grass green if you want. I kind of like the um, the other, but I'm putting a little bit of the grass green in just to give me a little shading there. There we go. Okay, and so that's what we have so far. Now I'm going to take my pointed eraser, or pointed uh, Q-tip, and I'm just going to make sure that anywhere I went outside, I kind of clean it up a little because I'm not going to be putting a background on this. If you're putting a background on, you've got a little more leniency when it comes to um, worrying about the background. And now I'm just going to take my liner, and I'm going to wiggle it in my rich brown, and I'm going to start up at the top and bring it down just a little you want it kind of rustic. You want it a little choppy. And the reason is because they grow very choppy. They don't grow. But you want to make sure you get up to the very, very top. Okay, and here. Okay, and we're going to do a little here. Make sure it touches your flower. Okay, and then up in here. This way. Okay, you can even bifold that one if you want a little bit. And I just want to give a little bit of a stem to these guys here. They don't have them. Oh, I had too much um, oil on my brush. There we go. that's not going to work the way I want it to, so I'll just... Okay. Now, the last thing, which I thought was really interesting, I'm looking at... This is an actual picture of some um, dogwood that are blooming. And um, they kind of mound up in the middle, as you see there. And then you have these little tiny green leaves all over there. So I'm going to do a little bit of that. And for the mounding up, I think I'm going to, that's really green, but let's take a little, let me do a little here too. I want it to be more regular shaped. That's better. There we go. I took a green, with a light green with a dark green on my pointer and just sort of there. That's better. Yeah. That'll, that'll do it better. You want that irregular look to the center of them. Okay. And then I'm going to use the same thing, the green with the little green. And I'm just going to pick a couple of spots where I think that there should be a little growth starting. They're across from each other. So if you do this, you have to put the leaves across from each other. There we go. And I'm going to do one here. Oops. 
Oops, there's a black spot there. I want to get rid of that. And I think I'll do a couple here. And maybe one or two on this side, or at least one. And then as we get to the end of the leaf there, these are the sprouts that are just coming out. You don't have to do anything fancy with them. Okay. Okay. That's pretty much it for the first coat. That's all we're going to do. So let's take a look at that, make sure we have it exactly the way we like it. Now, now that I have the point here, I'm just going to wipe this out a little. There we go. Okay, so it didn't take that long today, but at least you've seen what we did. This is the first fire. I'm gonna put this in the kiln. Oh no, this is the first fire. No, this is this is the first fire. I'm gonna put it in the kiln. It will fire out considerably, and then this one has two fires. Pick up those brushes and keep painting. Subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting, and we can get the word out to more people. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.